God's blueprint for your life can be found on the pages of Scripture. The basis of all truth is God's holy word. We invite you to join the Beulah Baptist Church in Bennett, North Carolina for Truth For Today with Dr. Neil Jackson. Dr. Jackson's verse-by-verse -verse preaching will encourage you in your journey of life and answer your greatest questions. So open your Bible and your heart to hear Truth For Today. My House Will Be Called a House of Prayer is Dr. Jackson's five-part sermon series that will encourage every family to make prayer a central component in their home. As our families and marriages are facing increased attacks from Satan, the answer is to call upon God for His help and protection in these battles. This series will give you the tools to transform your house into a spiritual place of prayer. For your gift of $50 or more, we will send you this series, and you will be helping us tell the world about Jesus. So when you write or call, make sure you request the series, My House Will Be Called a House of Prayer, with your gift of $50 or more. Impossible situations. How do you handle them? When the doctor gives you awful news, what do you do? When you get the pink slip where you've lost your job, how do you handle that? When your spouse just walks out and no longer wants to be married, how do you handle that? With the kids that you have trained and taught and brought to church, seem to turn their back on the ways of the Lord. How are we to handle that? When you are thrown in jail for your faith, now we would think that's around the world, that is getting closer to home, to Bennett, North Carolina, than it ever has, is happening here in America. When you're thrown in jail for your faith, what do you do? I'm here to say the right thing to do, the best thing to do, is to get on your knees and pray. Four scenes, not from a church house. Four scenes from a maximum security prison in a hopeless situation. The sermon's entitled, An Impossible, Impossible Situation. First scene, notice their problem, Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, to harm certain of the church, to torment certain of the church, to oppress certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. So evidently others in this church have been arrested as well. They had been imprisoned. They had been tortured. James was very active in this church serving him. And they killed him for it. I wonder how our numbers would be affected this week. If the authorities came in and hauled off several in this crowd. If that would cause more of us to show up. Or if it would cause less of us to show up. Look at the next verse. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. These were the days of unleavened bread. So the unleavened bread and Passover were at the same time. Thousands of Jewish people had flooded Jerusalem. There was a party atmosphere. It was festival time. It was, it was, it was a parade time. It was a party, a happy time. Herod would get a lot of respect from these people by persecuting these these Christ followers. Next verse. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. And delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So Peter was guarded by 16 soldiers. They were four serving at a time. They would have three hour watches. So he had 16 people 
guarding him. And I listen, a prisoner in that t- time period, they would chain one of his arms to another guard. Peter had both arms chained to guards on either side. Verse 10. He was in the maximum security section. This situation was hopeless. How are you going to fight the Roman government? We can't hire a crooked attorney to buy him off. They, they couldn't draft a resolution. They could not storm the castle. This was an impossible situation. When impossible situations come to your house, how do you respond? Number two, notice the prayer. It was fervent prayer. Verse 5, Peter was kept in prison. That's the problem. Here's what they're going to do about it. Here's the solution. But prayer was made. It carries the idea of labor pains. Now, I've never had a baby, have no desire to have a baby. But I hear it's pretty painful. I hear it's pretty taxing. Hey, they're travailing in childbirth. That's what these people were doing. This crisis had shut every door. They had no hope but one. And they said, we're going to get serious about our prayer life. So I come to you with all that's going on in our world, with all of these impossible situations with people. How's your prayer life? Is your prayer life like Jacob? I will not let you go until you bless me. Is your prayer life that like of Jesus where he sweat great drops of blood? He was into his prayer life. It was serious. And this church, they were serious about prayer. Yesterday I was, I was counseling in the heat of the moment where we're, we're, we're talking. And I hear a loud pitch lady from the far end of the hall. Screaming. Ah! So I tell the person that, that I'm counseling with, just excuse that noise. That is my wife, and she's down there watching football. She's passionate about it. I mean, she was watching it on the Internet. I don't even know if she was watching it. She was just watching the score keep popping up. Passionate about football. And I had this thought. Her screaming is doing absolutely no good. They're not hearing her cheer them on. I am. It's causing me problems. It's doing them no good whatsoever. But she is into it. Hold on a second. Your prayers do do good. They do avail much. But a lot of times we're not passionate. We're not into it. We're not fervent. We're not believing in our prayers. You go to a football stadium. They believe in their cheers. More than Christians believe in their prayers. It was fervent prayer. Look on at the verse. It was constant prayer. But prayer was made. Next two words. Without ceasing. This church was praying around the clock. It was an all-day prayer meeting. It was an all-night prayer meeting. They prayed and they prayed and they prayed. And they started praying and they would not stop praying until they got an answer to their prayer. Without ceasing, the Greek word is ectones. It means intense. It means earnest. It means consistent. It means, it means wholehearted prayer. I'm here to say the impossible situations in our life. We're going to have to persevere in prayer. We're going to have to be intense in prayer. And we have to keep praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. We're battling the forces of evil. Do you really think that Satan is just going to back off with one little, Father, now I lay me down to sleep. Save this person and get this one right with God. Amen. No, it's going to have to be intense. My fear 
is it's going to have to take some kind of tragedy to wake up most of us in the church. It was corporate prayer. Look what it says. Prayer was made without ceasing. Next three words. Of the church. So they were praying individually. They were coming together as a body to pray corporately. They were coming together as, hey, Jesus, you said where two or three are gathered in your name, you're in our midst. So therefore, we're coming together as the church because this is so big, because this is so huge. We're going to come. There's power when we all get together because all of our faith is leveraged. We're coming together to say, God, we believe in you. We believe you're a prayer answering God and we're united in this. It was corporate prayer. Acts chapter 2 verse 42 says they continued steadfastly the posture of doctrine. And they were fellowship and they were having communion and even eating meals together. And the secret and the success of this early church, I believe they were doing these things. The last one, they were continuing in praying together corporately. That would be in Sunday school classes. That would be with groups. And yes, that would be the church coming together and praying corporately. It was believing prayer. What it says. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church. Next two words, unto God. If they were betting people, this was a losing bet. What are the odds that Peter is going to get released from prison? The execution had already been signed. There were no other appeals that they could make to the, the next court or to the Supreme Court. It was over. He was going to be killed. Herod had already killed James. He was guarded by 16 soldiers. He was in the inner prison, verse 10. That's the maximum security so they couldn't bomb the thing to get him out. He was in the inner console chained to two guards behind a humongous, big, gigantic gate. What were the odds of him getting out? Who cares about the odds when God's on your side? They weren't counting the odds. Some of us have accepted, oh, well, it's just too big of a problem. Well, it's just, this is just, this is impossible. You're telling me it's impossible when God's on your side? You're telling me that that problem is too big for, for God? You're telling me, well, God's not strong enough to change that situation? Not these people. They believed in their God, not in the odds. What were the odds of Elijah defeating 450 prophets all by himself? What were the odds of Elisha overrunning the entire Syrian army? What were the odds of a teenager defeating this soldier in Goliath? What were the odds of Gideon and his 300 men defeating the 135,000 Midianite army? They weren't looking at odds. They were looking at their God. And I'm here to say, the reason we do not pray, the reason you don't pray for your situations, you don't really believe in God. Because if you believed in God and the power of prayer and how that God listens to your prayers, you would be making it a priority. You would be getting up early. The last thing you would do before you went to bed is not watching the late show. It would be calling out to God saying, God, you've got to change this situation. I know it looks bad and I know it looks big and I know it looks impossible. But it's not too big, bad or impossible for you. God, you are my hope. The reason we don't pray. We don't believe. It was believe in prayer. It was specific prayer. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. Last two words. For him. They were praying specifically. So when the answer came, they knew that God had answered because they were praying specifically 
for that need. That's why I'm saying, I don't see how you can have a strong prayer life. If you don't have a prayer list, if you're not praying specifically for things, if you're not saying, God, I'm believing this is what your word says. And although it may not look very likely to happen, your word said it, and I stand on your word. Do you have a specific prayer list? I don't learn a lot from my brother because I don't like him. One of the things no one has taught me a lot is I never go into his house without looking at his refrigerator. Because right there on the side, there is his prayer list that he has just been praying for years. As a family, coming together and our house is going to be a house, a home, a prayer. I'd love to take you all. So do you see these things they've been praying for? Salvation for people and then the dates they got saved impossible situations and the date they got answered it's because God we're going to get specific and we're going to believe your word and we're going to change some impossible situations guys it is in our reach if we believe in our God the problem the prayer thirdly notice the peace I love verse 6 look, look at verse 6 when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Peter is scheduled to be executed the next morning. If this, was, this was his last night. You would think, hey, bring in the television. Come on, let me read my favorite book one last time. You would think he would be writing out his last will and testament. you think he would be crying in a nervous wreck and stress. Oh, I hope it doesn't hurt. The night before he is to be executed, he's sleeping like a baby. Look at the next verse. The angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shone in the prison and he smote him. In the Greek means it means he kicked him. Hey, Peter, wake up. I don't know if he was a heavy sleeper, but you would think this night he wouldn't be heavy. you think this night the least little thing would have wake him up. But they had to kick him, wake him up. I'm here to say, listen to this. This is huge. When you have people interceding for you, while you're in the midst of the trial, you got the peace of God. And I'm here to say, when you're going through overwhelming, difficult circumstances, you need people praying for you that you will have peace in the midst of it. The peace. Number four, I'm done. The praise. Look, 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 look at verse 7. Angel Lord came upon him. Light shone in the prison, smote Peter on the side, raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly! And his chains fell off from his hands. Angel said unto him, Gird thyself, bind on thy sandals. And so he did. There was obedience there. And he saith unto them, Cast thy garment about thee, get dressed. Put your shirt on. Follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. What's going on? He's still half awake. And when they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. This humongous gate just, just, just opens. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him, because this church cared enough to pray. Peter was set free. Because this church said, we will sacrifice our time to pray for our brother in need. He was set free. Hey, who do you know that's in the clutches of sin? That Satan has them in solitary confinement. Do you care enough about them to sacrifice your time to pray for them? Oh, we'll talk about them. We'll criticize them. Oh, that Peter, he probably did something wrong. Right, he should have been so out there with what he said. We'll criticize him. Do we, do we pray for him? Thomas Watson, I love the statement he makes about this. The angel fetched Peter out of prison. 
But it was prayer that fetched the angel. And my friend, I don't know who's in prison in your life. But I know the way you're going to get them set free is prayer. We look back at verse 11 and we're done. Peter was come to himself and said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod from all expectation of the people of Jews. Hold on a second. There are people in your life that their faith would grow and increase if you would pray for them. There are people, oh no, I mean, he was Peter on this rock. I'll build my church. And his faith grew and increased because people were praying for him. And you could increase some people's faith in your life if you would get serious about praying for them. Verse, verse, verse 12. When he had considered the thing, what am I going to do? I'm an escaped convict. He came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. Where many were gathered together praying. So that wasn't two or three. It was a whole lot of people. And as Peter knocked at the door, the gate, a damsel came to hearken named, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness. But ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Now I've said before, I wonder if she was blonde now, I always get grief over that, so I'm not saying that. But you think about it. She comes, she sees what they're looking for. Oh, you wonder, you wonder if she's a blonde. I'm not saying that. I'm just reading the Bible. Verse 15, and they said unto her, you're mad. Another reason I'm not saying it, but another reason she might have been blind. You're mad. You're a blonde. But she constantly affirmed. I wonder if she was a redhead here. Oh, Sid, he's at the door. Constantly affirmed that even so. Then said they, it is his angel. Do you see that? I love that phrase because they did not have perfect faith. And yet God still answered their prayer. But Peter continued knocking. It was easier for him to get out of jail to then to get into the prayer meeting. He continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. That astonished is a King James word. Uh, I love my King James Bible. But it does not convey the message. You look it up in the Greek, it means beside themselves with amazement. To get it to Bennett language, they were having a holy running, shouting, wave, hanky waving fit. He is free! Woohoo! It says astonishment. That's what it. That's what it means. Look it up. They were astonished, but he beckoned them, saying, "Guys, I'm going to stay convict. You got to hold it down." With the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord brought him out of prison. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went unto another place. Two thoughts and I'm done. Beckoning unto them to hold their peace. They were going nuts over answer prayer. Astonished behind, beside themselves with excitement. If there is no joy in your life, probably because there's no prayer in your life. Praying people are joyful people. Praying people over impossible situations are happy people. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not throwing rocks at anybody. But you show me somebody that comes griping and complaining and criticizing, I show you somebody that doesn't believe in the power of prayer. Because if I'm praying, I'm not griping. If I'm praying, I'm not criticizing. I'm believing God to change that impossible situation. We had a, a fire in our community. I was at home cutting the grass. Tracy comes flying up the driveway, literally going in like 70 miles an hour up in our gravel driveway. She's blowing the horn like crazy. I'm just trying to cut grass. She's blowing the horn. She said, hey, there's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire. 
You got to do something. There's a fire. My thought was, what am I going to do? Have they called the fire department? What, 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 what am I going to do? And I realized my job on that day in that position was to go comfort people that were suffering loss. I showed up at the fire. You know what I found? Not throwing rocks at anybody. I found there were people there just to watch. I found there were people there just to be nosy. And I'm not throwing rocks at anybody. I mean, I'm not. There are people just, hey, haven't seen anything this big around here in a long time. And they just wanted to watch. Some people wanted to be nosy. Some people showed up and they were just the loving caregivers, just loving people and consoling people. But there were some firemen that showed up. And they let them all know. Hey, big fire! Big fire! Big, 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 massive fire! We got to do it! And they came from over here, and they came from over there, and they came from over there, and they came from over there, and they came from over there. We got to do something about this big fire! And they did do something. And they put it out. I'm preaching to people this morning, and that's my word to you. Possible situation, fire, tragedy, crisis. What are you doing about it? Just being nosy? Psst, did you hear? Oh, you're not going to believe this. Just there to watch. Are you there just to console? We need people to console. But that's not all we need to do. Who's going to put out the stinking fire? I'm praying this morning. There will be a bunch of people at Beulah. I'm going to be a firefighter. And I'm going to put out the stinking fire. No matter how big it is. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Truth For Today. Our prayer is that God's Word has ministered to your deepest need and answered many of your questions about life. Truth For Today is only able to broadcast on this station through the regular prayers and financial support of God's people. Would you consider becoming a monthly partner of Truth For Today? You may mail your gifts to Truth For Today, Post Office Box 104, Bennett, North Carolina, 27208. If you would like to receive a copy of today's message, please request this sermon with your donation of any amount. If you would like to donate by credit card, you may call 336-581-3170. Be assured that God's Word has the answer for your every need. And join us next time for Truth For Today.